Hello and welcome to all my dear students. So today we are going to continue with the chapter environmental issues and today we are going to see the lecture number 3 of the chapter. In this lecture number 3 you are going to basically study about the case study of how to control plastic waste then you will see about organic farming and a case study on organic farming and then we will start with the radioactive waste. Chalo. So let's start with today's class where first we are going to in our last class you have seen solid waste and the methods to dispose of the biggest trouble the biggest solid waste generated on daily basis is plastic. So there's a case study on how to control the use of plastic and a solution to it was given by a person a person living in Bangalore called Ahmed Khan. This fellow Ahmed Khan is a 57 year old man who used to run a plastic factory. But one day he realized that his factory is leading to a great damage. So he decided to stop producing plastic rather using that plastic in some other way so that the waste generation can be minimized. So with the help of the plastic he he collaborated with some of the uh, companies and with this collaboration this fellow was able to generate a chemical called polyblend from the plastic which was then mixed with bitumen type of coal and this bitumen coal along with the polyblend is used to lay roads right this this polyblend it enhances the water repellent property of bitumen by three by a factor of three and this is how this plastic this this is one of the way that we can use the plastic to overcome the generation of waste and initially this fellow used to sell plastic and now he started buying plastic from the rack pickers and all these uh, kabadi walas at a very high price offering them good money buying the plastic using it to make polyblend that is again used to lay roads it is said that 40 kilometer long road in bangalore is made with the help of this polyblend so a person imagine who first used to generate plastic now he buys the plastic from the market and use it in a good manner isn't it isn't it a revolution so yes, Ahmed Khan is one of a revolutionary, uh, revolutionary person who created a big revolution in the field of solid waste by developing a very good use of plastic. Clear? So let's write. So this Ahmed Khan, I'm not going to, I'm not going to write the complete concept, simply some points I'll write. Ahmed Khan, he started preparing polyblend. from plastics which now mixed with bitumen coal and is used to lay roads this poly blend enhances Basically, this poly blend increases the water repellent property of coal by factor of 3. Right? Yes or no? And it is said that 40 kilometer long road of Bangalore is laid with the help of polyblend. So it is a great, great, great revolution in the field of solid waste. Okay, now coming to organic farming. Basically, you have seen that agricultural waste is also very damaging. Agricultural waste, if it is directly dumped in the water body, it leads to problems like eutrophication and biomagnification. So, how to minimize this agricultural waste? A very good case study is given by Ramesh Chandra Dagar. He was he's a, a farmer of uh, Haryana Sonipat. He started doing some integrated concept of organic farming where not only he used to 
grow crops but along with growing crop he also managed uh, cattle yard he also managed dairy he also managed beekeeping and he managed his field and so many work parallelly and generating zero waste kaise zero waste because the waste generated from agricultural feed was given to the cattles as a as a fodder now when cattles used to give the dung it was directly given to the agricultural field as manure now whatever milk was generated by these cattle was used in his dairy farm then beekeeping was also giving him or uh, was also giving him an additional income so basically the problem of agricultural waste is uh the the for uh, one you once you like uh, cut the crop some some part of the crop is left which cannot be used by the farmer so basically farmers what they do they burn lekin ab agar kheti ke sath sath aapne cattles bhi maintain kiye honge now that can be used as a fodder food ki tarah use ho jayega ab dusra problem agriculture mein hai manure ka so for that we use artificial fertilizer and then they cause troubles like eutrophication and biomagnification to ab jab humne cattle farm maintain kiya hai then they are generating huge amount of dung that can be used as a manure so you will be protected from the use of fertilizer artificial unnecessary fertilizer bach jayenge acha when you are maintaining bees bees are good bio uh, kind of bio insecticides and bio pesticide these bee will keep a control on unwanted growth of insects and pest on your field so you are not only getting honey from these bees but these bees are also maintaining the population of insects and pest on the field again you are not using insecticides and pesticides so somewhat he maintained all these different work on the same field and one work was helping the other the other work was helping the first one so like this usne pure management acha sa kiya this fellow ramesh chand the dagger and he performed so many work but generating zero waste so this is this was an inspiration to other farmers and then later on this fellow ramesh chandra dagar he associated 5000 farmers of haryana and he started his own kisan welfare and now it is very very famous and so many farmers have joined ramesh chandra and uh, yes they are proceeding further in the field of organic farming so not only are getting good products from the agriculture but agriculture is done in a very good integrated manner right so this is the case study given in organic farming this page i have taken directly from your ncert book you can just make sure that you read it once and then it will be done proceeding further with the radioactive waste beta apart from agricultural waste industrial waste hospital waste uh, e waste that is electronic waste the biggest trouble of today's world is radioactive waste we know that every country wants to become super power and for that they are excessively using nuclear weapons nuclear weapon means the weapons which are made up of radioactive substances like polonium radium etc ye jo weapons hote hain they are very very harmful like atom bombs hydrogen bombs they are very very harmful and very destructive the rate of their destruction is on not only limited on for for one generation but it affects continues to several generation so radioactive waste is the most harmful waste which every country should every country should come forward and should pledge to minimize the use of radioactive radioactive substances because these substances they release certain emissions which are very very harmful they can cause different types of cancer genetic disorders and lead to even premature death and so many other things are associated with these radioactive waste there are so many cases seen in the world due to slight negligence of people like chernobyl disaster in our country only bhopal gas tragedy all these lead to massive destruction which not only was one time but it continued to several generation right so it is suggested to every country that if they are even making nuclear weapons then the then their production should be done away from civilians that means if public is living in a in a specific area then too far away from the uh 
public the power plants of nuclear power plants should be laid and whatever waste is generated from these nuclear power plants should not be directly disposed of they should not not even burnt they should be only dumped in the ground that to very very deep like for example 500 meters underground so that it can never come in contact with an, any people and it should not create any trouble right so let's write with this what is radioactive waste it is the most harmful waste correct yes so it is the most harmful waste generated by countries in order to become super power generated by that is nuclear weapons hydrogen bombs atom bombs the problem associated with developing nuclear weapon is if slight negligence takes place and if there's slight release of these radioactive substances in the atmosphere if it they come in the contact with the people around then it is going to create a havoc slight negligence in nuclear power plants can lead to disaster nuclear power plant can lead to disaster like for example chernobyl disaster bhopal gas tragedy etc third whatever waste is generated from these plants should be dumped underground that to 500 meters below so that these waste should never ever come in contact with the people either through air water or any other source correct so pehla to karo ki bhai koshish use hi mat karo radioactive weapons ko even if the countries want to use then use it in such a manner that is not causing any large scale destruction right now the another problem associated with today's world which is even bigger than different types of pollution is global warming okay global warming is actually a result of pollution only if i want to say that what is global warming then what is the result of global warming then basically this global warming is occurring ye ho kyu rahi hai ye ho hi isliye rahi hai due to excessive pollution but before we do global warming we have to understand what is greenhouse effect greenhouse effect is good right you know what happens this is your earth okay this is the earth atmosphere here we are living okay now through the atmosphere the sun radiations they are able to penetrate correct the sun radiance radiations they are able to penetrate inside the atmosphere but now here what happens beta these radiations they are trapped and then lot of then some radiations they escape out and but some of the red radiations which are generated from the activities going on the earth they are not escape out they get trapped in the atmosphere and then they are reradiated back in the earth which is responsible for maintaining the earth's atmospheric temperature a constant temperature ko 
मेंटेन करने के लिए दिस ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट इज एब्सोल्युटली वेरी वेरी नेसेसरी दिस ग्रीन हाउस बेसिकली इट्स इट्स बेसिकली अ ग्लास हाउस इन विच यू कीप अ प्लांट and then sun rays are able to penetrate but whatever radiations are generated by the plant which is rich in gases like co2 methane and all these they are not able to escape out and they are re-radiated back as a result the temperature of the earth is maintained but now what is happening due to human activity the concentration of these gases are increasing the amount of co2 and other gases are increasing because of which lot amount of radiations heat radiations are trapped and they are re-emitted back leading to unnecessary increase in the temperature and that is called as global warming so greenhouse effect is good but excessive of greenhouse excessive trapping of the heated radiations in the earth's atmosphere leads to global warming that is a trouble agar greenhouse nahi hota then we would have not been able to survive the temperature of the earth would have been like minus 18 so अगर ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट नहीं होता तो हम अर्थ पे सरवाइव नहीं कर सकते थे दिस ग्रीन हाउस इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मेंटेनिंग अ हेल्दी टेम्परेचर ऑन अर्थ बट ड्यू टू ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी दिस ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज द कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ दिस ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज इज अननेसेसरीली अनवॉन्टेडली हैज इंक्रीज टू ट्रिमेंडस एक्सटेंट एज अ रिजल्ट लॉट अमाउंट ऑफ हीट रेडिएशन जो एस्केप हो भी सकती थी द रेडिएशन विच कुड हैव एस्केप्ड बट नॉट ड्यू टू इंक्रीज ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज इवन दे आर गेटिंग री रेडिएटेड बैक लीडिंग टू इंक्रीज इन द अर्थ टेम्परेचर इट इज सेट दैट इन लास्ट सर्टन डेकेट्स द टेम्परेचर ऑफ अर्थ हैज इंक्रीज बाय पॉइंट सिक्स डिग्री सेल्शियस विच इज वेरी अलार्मिंग एंड दिस इज नोन एज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग अब होता क्या है ग्लोबल वार्मिंग से बेटा दिस ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज मेनली रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर अब अगर अर्थ का टेम्परेचर बढ़ेगा देन द फर्स्ट ट्रबल इज मेल्टिंग ऑफ द ग्लेशियर्स इफ ग्लेशियर्स विल स्टार्ट मेल्टिंग देन द वाटर विल कम डाउन थ्रू द माउंटेन्स एंड इट विल मिक्स विद द सी एज अ रिजल्ट द सी लेवल विल राइज once the sea level will rise all the islands and all those uh, uh, islands and all subcontinents they will start drowning apart from increased in global warming temperature badh jayega to jo rainfall pattern hai precipitation pattern hai vegetation pattern hai lifestyle of human hai, everything is going to get changed so increase in temperature is not only resulting in melting of glaciers increase in the sea level but it is also going to change the pattern of precipitation it is going to change the pattern of rainfall affect the growth of vegetation more temperature will favor the growth of bacteria and fungi creating more conditions for more earth will become more prone to epidemics and pandemics so so many troubles are associated with increase in temperature so this global warming is very very alarming and if you really want to overcome global warming the only solution is planting more and more trees ped lagao duniya bachao this is the only motto and everyone should do this if you want to see your healthy earth otherwise agar hum प्लांटेशन नहीं करेंगे आज भी एंड इफ विल इफ वी विल स्टिल कंटिन्यू विद डिफॉरेस्टेशन देन दिस ग्लोबल वार्मिंग दिस इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर इज गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू एंड अ टाइम विल कम दैट दिस अर्थ विल आल्सो बिकम अनफिट फॉर सर्वाइवल क्योंकि इतना टेम्परेचर बढ़ जाएगा कि पूरा प्रेसिपिटेशन पैटर्न वेजिटेशन पैटर्न ग्रोथ ऑफ बैक्टीरिया एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग टू बिकम कम्प्लीटली इनसेन एंड ह्यूमन विल नॉट बी एबल टू कंट्रोल दैट कंडीशन सो टू अवॉइड दैट टू ओवरकम दैट द ओनली सोल्यूशन इज प्लांटिंग ट्रीज अगर अभी हम नहीं जागे इफ टूडे वी डोंट वेक अप देन टमोरो इज द इज नो टमोरो अगर आज हमने उठ के पेड़ नहीं लगाए पेड़ काटना नहीं रोका 
then there is no tomorrow for us so with this i would like to request this chapter basically beta this whole environmental pollution this chapter it is nothing you don't have to learn much you just have to read this chapter once from your ncert this chapter is only about awareness that how much you are aware about your environment ये चैप्टर आपको सिर्फ आपके इन्वायरमेंट से अवेयर कराने के लिए ही पढ़ाया जा रहा है राइट सो इट्स अ हाई टाइम दैट वी द यंग जनरेशन शुड कम फॉरवर्ड एंड शुड स्टॉप द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ डिफॉरेस्टेशन एंड सो मेनी अदर रिगरस प्रैक्टिसेस व्हिच आर गोइंग ऑन अदरवाइज एज आई सेड देर विल बी नो टमोरो एंड नो टमोरो मीन्स नो फ्यूचर and we all want a a healthy future for that only we are craving yes or no so with this we come to the end of the simple and short lecture one more lecture to go and that will be the last final lecture of your excellence batch in which we will complete the syllabus of class 12th hope you all enjoyed the entire journey and uh, yes it was absolutely great teaching you all just one more lecture to go and on friday we will wind up with our excellence batch for botany syllabus